Tonight, the fourth Democratic primary debate takes place in Ohio, and it will feature 12, count them, 12 Democratic candidates. So rest assured that this is going to be more chaotic and more insufferable than any other debate. Now, why they didn't break this into two nights, I don't get it. But nonetheless, 12 candidates will participate, and it's going to feature Julian Castro, Amy Klobuchar, Beto O'Rourke, Andrew Yang, Pete Buttigieg, Elizabeth Warren, Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders, Kamala Harris, Cory Booker, billionaire Tom Steyer, and Tulsi Gabbard. Now, first and foremost, let me just say that the fact that we have a billionaire participating is a disgrace. If you are a billionaire, you should not be allowed to run for president, period. And I know that people will say, well, Mike, isn't that kind of antithetical to democracy? Well, no, because in the same way that you shouldn't have to tolerate intolerance, in order to protect democracy, you do have to impose some restrictions on democracy. So not allowing someone with net worth that exceeds a billion dollars to participate in a democratic primary, that is a way that you protect democracy. You stop the country from devolving further into oligarchy. So the fact that he is here is absolutely a disgrace. And I hope that every single candidate takes the time to point out that his presence there is proof that we are devolving into an oligarchy and they better take the time to shame him because he should not be included. He should have been excluded. Swap in anyone else. I don't care who. Um, Bill de Blasio. I don't give a shit. He shouldn't be here. Tom Steyer should not have been invited. But with that being said, I still want to give you my take on what we can expect and look for. But let's look at polls to kind of assess where we are. So the good news is that Bernie Sanders is finally starting to regain momentum after his heart attack. But the bad news is that Joe Biden is also regaining momentum. Uh, Elizabeth Warren is starting to slide. Now, we've kind of consolidated the middle tier down to about two candidates, Pete Buttigieg and Kamala Harris, each sitting at 5.2%, with O'Rourke and Yang kind of teetering between the mid and low tiers. But the thing about Joe Biden is his polling, it, it's kind of zigzagging, right? It's going up, it's going down, it's going up, it's going down. It's overall seemingly inconsistent, but if you look at the overall trend since he entered the race, the trajectory is down, right? So this is the number one goal. Again, I say this every time, but this should be a pylon in this debate. Every single person on that stage should be slamming Joe Biden, attacking him at every chance that they get. Because if he is the nominee, Trump will likely win. Trump will become the president. And finally, people are starting to realize, including people who are out of touch like Bill Maher, that Joe Biden is not the best bet to go against Donald Trump. Because first and foremost, um, not only is he uh, getting hit by Donald Trump for being corrupt, he doesn't know how to respond. He's flailing, right? He can't even win over his own base of support. And now Donald Trump is hitting him while he's down. It's going to be a disaster. So if you care about defeating Donald Trump, these candidates have got to hit him and hit him hard. Joe Biden cannot have a good performance. He has to be attacked. Now, on top of this, my stance when it comes to Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren is that usually at these debates, they have to maintain. They were doing good enough in the polls to where they can kind of wait out the storm, right? I'm not going to say that now. If you're Elizabeth Warren, you have to have a good performance. You're starting to dip a little bit. You're still overall probably uh, tied with Joe Biden statistically, but she has to solidify her lead as front runner. So if I'm Elizabeth Warren, I'm taking the gloves off. I'm going in on Joe Biden. He's my number one target. If she doesn't do that, then um, it's going to be a missed opportunity because if she truly wants to be the front runner, she has to take down Joe Biden. And polls indicate that anything that Joe Biden loses in terms of voters, in terms of support, it's Elizabeth Warren's gain. So she'd be a fool to not take on Joe Biden. I don't necessarily know that she is going to do that. But now, if she shows how weak Joe Biden is and how strong she can be against Joe Biden, this will really renew people's strength that maybe she can take on Donald Trump in the general after the debacle that was, you know, the Native American fiasco. That's still kind of playing out. But I mean, she needs to demonstrate strength. She does that by taking off the gloves and attacking Joe Biden. Now, when it comes to Bernie Sanders, let me be very, very clear. Bernie Sanders has got to win this debate. He's got to win it. It doesn't mean that he's out if he loses. It doesn't mean that he's out if he has a mediocre performance, but if he wants to remain a top-tier candidate, one of the top three, 
um, and really be far and away and not fall into mid tier at least temporarily, he's gotta he's gotta have a phenomenal performance. So um, I will be on edge throughout the entirety of this debate, and it's gonna be tough, right? There's 12 people on the stage, so he's competing with 11 other candidates for airtime. It's gonna be really tough, but he's gotta find a way to elbow through and fight hard, show people why he's the best candidate. Now, before, I have maintained that him and Elizabeth Warren need to have a ceasefire. No direct attacks on one another. Now is where Bernie Sanders starts to really uh, differentiate himself. This is what he needs to do, and I think he's starting to realize that. So what do I mean by that strategically? Well, I don't believe he should just directly attack Elizabeth Warren, but what you do on that stage is you make statements about your candidacy, and you throw everyone else under a bus, but included in that push under the bus is also Elizabeth Warren. So um, think about this. A new Monmouth University poll found that 40% of Democratic Party primary voters who support single pair back Elizabeth Warren, 17% back Joe Biden. So what you do is you say, I am the candidate who will fight for Medicare for all. There's no questions. There's no red flags. I've never wavered on it once. Every other candidate on this stage either does not support Medicare for all, once supported it and wavered, or no longer supports it. Every other candidate on this stage either does not support Medicare for all, or once supported it and wavered, or they say they support it, but you can't really trust that they're going to fight as hard as me. He needs to make it clear, nobody's fighting harder than I am on Medicare for All. Additionally, what he needs to do is differentiate himself by saying, I'm the anti-war candidate on this stage. Joe Biden vo voted for the Iraq War, right? I'm the only senator on this stage, without naming Elizabeth Warren, who voted against Donald Trump's military budgets. Every other senator voted for Donald Trump's military budget. Not me. I did not do that. Now, he's not naming Elizabeth Warren, but it's still an indirect attack. That's what he needs to do, because if he just if he just flat out, you know, calls out Elizabeth Warren by name at this point, we know what's going to happen. There's going to be the headlines. He's going to be deemed, you know, a misogynistic pig. He's too aggressive. He's toxic. So he's got to go after her, but he has to do it indirectly at this point, right? Um, on top of that, he's got to stress electability. This is an argument that resonates with voters. If I'm Bernie, I'm saying, look, these districts that flipped and went from Obama to Trump in 2016, I'm getting a lot of support in these counties. I can win these areas of the country back. I've built up support in the Rust Belt over the course of the last three years. I am polling very well in the states that Hillary Clinton lost. If you want someone who's going to win, we need to energize the base. That's me. I'm the most electable candidate. Everyone else has a good shot at beating Donald Trump, but nobody has a shot like me. I'm the one who can win. He needs to say this and understand I'm being careful with my strategy here if I'm Bernie and not necessarily directly going after Elizabeth Warren, but throwing everyone under the bus and not excluding her from that conversation. So he will be walking a fine line if he's able to successfully carry out this strategy, but this is what he has to do. He has to demonstrate strength. He has to show that he's capable of taking on Donald Trump after just having a heart attack. He does that by seeming uh, by being energetic and being seemingly enthusiastic about running and being in the race he, he's got to go hard um so this is going to be really really this is going to be a stressful night for me as a bernie sanders supporter he has to win this he's got to do it so i really hope that he does that strategy that i'm recommending he has to start taking the gloves off, right? If I'm Elizabeth Warren, I'm directly attacking Joe Biden. If I'm Bernie Sanders, I'm indirectly attacking Elizabeth Warren. Now, other things to look out for. Um, if I had to guess, we're going to see a sparring battle between Beto O'Rourke and Pete Buttigieg. These two have kind of been trading blows. They both are garbage, but I would like for them to kind of go after each other to drive down each other's support. I mean, both of them, they're such non-entities in this race. Buttigieg is arguably a mid-tier, or Buttigieg is a mid-tier candidate. O'Rourke is arguably mid-tier, but it's just, it's going to distract from the main event, which is Biden, Warren, and Sanders. But one thing I'm really looking closely at is uh, Tulsi Gabbard. We know that Kamala Harris was her target last time, and she effectively single-handedly killed Kamala's campaign. There's evidence that she's setting her sights on Elizabeth Warren. She kind of criticized Elizabeth Warren on an episode of The Hill TV's Rising, saying she's not qualified. 
Um, if I had to guess, I'd say there's about a 50% chance that Tulsi Gabbard lays into Elizabeth Warren, which will be good for Bernie Sanders supporters because maybe, you know, he wins. But the thing about that is, who knows, maybe that just helps Joe Biden. So if I'm Tulsi Gabbard, I'm really, I'm going after both uh, Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden. On top of that, it's very likely that we see billionaire Tom Steyer go after Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders. But, um... That should be great. That should be entertaining because he's going to try to present himself as the anti-establishment candidate. But the problem with that is you're a billionaire. So by definition, you are the establishment, right? You're part of the oligarchy. So it will be a nice moment if he does go after them because I think they're going to easily be able to swat away his attacks. When it comes to people like Andrew Yang, Julian Castro, Amy Klobuchar, Kamala Harris, Cory Booker, if I'm them... I'm not necessarily trying to win this. I'm just trying to do what I can in a 12-person debate to have that standout moment, to really shine, to make headlines. That's what they need to do. And I think to this extent, Andrew Yang and Kamala Harris, and to a lesser extent, Cory Booker, have been able to do that. But if they really want to solidify their spot in that mid-tier and be strong competitors, they do have to have a standout moment. So this is really make or break for, I think, a lot of the candidates, um, it's a crucial moment for Bernie Sanders and also Elizabeth Warren um, because this could shake up the dynamic of the race. If Bernie has a good performance, he could reclaim his spot at the top as number two. Elizabeth Warren, if she doesn't perform well enough, if she doesn't demonstrate strength, she could continue to slide. Um, I suspect that Joe Biden will continue to slide regardless of his performance, but it's just a matter of how fast he slides. Everyone's got a dogpile on him, so this is really... It's an important debate, which is why it's so disappointing to see 12 people all on one stage. Like, they should have separated this into two nights. Six candidates on each stage, then there would have been, you know, at, at least more time to really dive into the policy specifics, to be more nuanced. But at this rate, I mean, how much time is anyone going to have? So, there is a likelihood that everything that I said doesn't matter because it's all kind of a wash, like nobody speaks enough to stand out, there's really no winners or losers, that's how I kind of felt with the last debate, where it was difficult to pin down who won and who lost, because so much was happening, however, um, we'll see what happens, all I know is I'm going to be rooting for Bernie Sanders, and I truly, truly hope that he comes prepared, I hope his voice is well rested, I hope that he has energy, I hope that he goes hard, because this is important. This could determine whether or not he surges and continues to surge or if he kind of just remains as that, you know, far third. And it's 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 crucial that he doesn't. So this is going to be fascinating if it's moderated well. It's not going to be moderated well. I'll just tell you that probably. So we'll just watch it and cross our fingers and toes, guys, because this is really important.